Hello and welcome back to Build a CubeSat. I'm Manuel and today we are going to take a look at designing the battery compartment for my CubeSat. So this is going to be a super quick update about the design mainly because I don't have a machine prototype yet, just this uh, 3D printed one. If I may just interrupt for a minute, future Manuel here and in the meantime the actual machine part has arrived so I thought we might just take a look at this before jumping into the CAD. Also, please excuse the somewhat more nasal voice than usual, it's uh, because I've been having a cold for a few days now. So I got two of these EPS bays milled out of aluminum 6061 of course by PCBWay. And once again I've got nothing but good things to say about uh, the quality of the work and the speed. And also this time they came wrapped in this fun um, vacuum shrink wrap plastic, so that's kind of neat. Um, the inserts here are still just uh, 3D printed for the, for the final product. I would also have these milled out of uh, PEEK. That's an engineering plastic that's great for its uh, thermal stability and its um, low outgassing characteristics. The standoffs here is where the um, EPS PCB will be mounted on top of this all. And if we just remove them for a moment, we can have a look at the bottom. What's neat about these inserts here is that they are identical on the top and on the bottom. So it's basically four times the same part, which will probably save some money in manufacturing. On the bottom we see the... do we see this? Yeah, we see this. The hexagonal um, holes. Let me get this a little closer. Yes. The hexagonal holes where the uh, nuts will go to bolt down the EPS PCB. Um, and I think if we remove the top four screws next, uh, we can have a look at the bottom. One thing that isn't great yet is the parallelism of, uh, of the rails when they're attached to, to the base. So, there's a difference of about uh, plus minus 0 0.5 millimeters between here and here, and that's too much. I think the, uh, the CubeSat design specifications allow for 0 0.1 millimeters of tolerance, so that's something I'll need to work on in a future revision. So that's three. And that's four. And this should allow us to just pop out the inserts like this. And just like that we have we got access to the to the batteries. Now um, another thing I would like to point out are these arrays of holes here. This is where you would attach uh, the side panels, basically the, where the solar panels will go. And uh, there's a, a group of three holes for each screw, because I would like to have the option to slide the whole EPS compartment uh, up or down by 10 millimeters, for example, to shift the center of mass of the whole thing. And as you may be able to see, um, is this in focus? It's somewhat in focus. Uh, the upper and lower holes are tapped and the center hole is not. That's because there is a slot in here. If we are able to see this, it's maybe a bit dark, but I can show you on one of these parts. Yeah, there is a slot here that will accept a nut and that's um, how we would bolt on the PV panels from the outside. So this is true for these two sides, um, the X plus and X minus. The Y plus and Y minus, on the other hand, there is just not enough room for a, for a nut to go in here because we're really close to the, to the battery. So unfortunately, um, these are tapped. I, uh, I would like to avoid having to tap holes as much as I can. But that's a compromise, that, a compromise that I have to do as of now. Maybe I'll find a, some solution in the future, but for the moment these are tapped. And also all the secondary holes, so the top ones and the 
button ones are um, tapped as well. Um, the idea here is that you would tap them if you need them. I think in most cases the center hole will be the one that you need. But um, you know, I'll, I'll just I would I think it's prudent to include the option to uh, to slide this up or down a bit in case it's needed. All right, so like this, we should be able to just pop out the batteries. These are of course the um, LJMJ1 that we talked about in a, in a previous episode. And now we have a look at the thing without the batteries and we can just pop out the bottom inserts. Of course, the tolerances on these are not great as of now because they're just 3D printed, but it works for a demo. And that's what it looks like without anything in it. So all in all, um, I'm pretty happy. Did I mention the cost? I think I haven't mentioned the cost yet. I paid $290 for uh, the two of those. So that's uh, 145 each without shipping that is. And I think given the complexity and the size of this part, that is definitely reasonable. Um, if it's possible to bring down the cost a bit in the future, that will definitely be that would be nice. But yeah, for now it's it's okay. And most of the things have worked pretty well. Of course, there are a few improvements that I will want to make in future iterations. But so far so good. It works for prototyping. Let's maybe switch back to the original uh, footage now. To be honest, you know most of what's interesting about this uh, already, so you only have to continue watching if, uh, <laughs> if you're really interested in the cat. But if you are, let's jump into the cat right now. Then continuing on, if we turn off this insert and maybe also turn off the batteries, we see this PCB here that will have contact ohms to actually make contact to the batteries. Um, for these, uh, Grant over at Snaptron was kind enough to send over some uh, samples. I'll put in some B-roll here because these are really tiny that I would like to evaluate for this purpose. But my idea here is to use uh, these PCBs with contact ohms instead of the regular battery holders because it would enable us to go rather quickly and easily from you know, to switch between battery configurations. So you could come, go from a 4S1P, so four in series, one in parallel, to a 2S2P or a 1S4P configuration um, pretty easily. I mean, these are just super simple, probably even one-sided or two-sided at max PCBs um, that would cost a few dollars each to switch between. So, uh, during development of the EPS, this may be um, very handy to evaluate different configurations. What I am still figuring out though, is how to make the connection from the battery contact PCB to the actual um, EPS PCB that's going to be up here. Uh, we need some kind of probably spring-loaded pins or some kind of, I don't know yet, milled pins. Uh, because only a blob of solder will probably not hold up. But that is something for a future video. Um, yeah, thank you much for watching. Please let me know if you liked this episode and I'll see you in the next one.